There are moments when I actually begin to believe. Believe what? We work for God. Some advice? Don't look. I have to know. You know without looking. What, are you tired? Yeah, getting no sleep does that to me. It's not enough we worked the case last night. You had to pick up the phone first thing this morning. I need marathon overtime. I got a lot of holiday shopping. Well, don't get me anything. I hate having to buy everyone at work with a present. But as a gift to yourself, pick up a new suit. I've seen that one all week. It's my lucky suit. You know, you are the reason Baltimore gets no publicity. LAPD, GQ named them best dressed cop shop in the country. GQ? Who reads GQ? My point exactly. Hey, Deutsch. What have you got for us? Newborn baby it was found buried in the woods over there. And here's the delivery room. The manager said a young couple checked in last night, checked out about 6 this morning. The sheets and towels were piled in a heap in the closet. The lab's taking them in for processing. Looks like they tried to clean the place up. Anyone see or hear anything? Yeah, the maid, Vanessa Warren, saw a kid walking across the parking lot early this morning. What about the other motel guests? No one's checking out till we get their statements. Who found the baby? Reuben Stone lives in the neighborhood. He was walking his dog who started barking at the gravesite, going crazy. Mr. Stone saw the dirt was freshly dug. He called 911. The body's in a shallow grave. Looks like whoever buried it used their hands to scoop out the dirt. Tell us, Griscom. Full term infant male, very recently delivered, no external evidence of trauma or injury. Born alive? I can't say at this point. The body is hardly wiped off. The, um, the umbilical cord is torn. The only thing that's evident is whoever did this has no idea of how to deliver a baby. How long for the autopsy? Give me a few hours. dead baby outside the motel. Didn't the same thing happen up in Jersey? Well, that one was murdered. This one could have been a stillborn. Stillborn or not, you do what's right. You give the baby a proper burial. I'll take Reuben Stone. You want the maid? Sure, I'm good with maids. I saw someone come out of room 35 this morning. I was loading my cleaning cart when I heard voices. Could you hear anything? I couldn't say for sure. But I thought maybe they were leaving, so I looked down the hall. A boy came out of room 35 and went around back behind the motel. Didn't seem like he was checking out, so I went back to loading my cart. Was the boy carrying anything? I think he was holding a towel. Thanks. What time did you find the gravesite, Mr. Stone? Early, around 6.30. I thought Ginger would wake everyone up in the hotel. Did you see anyone in the uh, woods or in the parking lot? Nah, there was no one else around. You sure? At 6.30 in the morning, you can see everything. Yeah, I remember the couple that checked into room 35. Why is that? Aside from them being so young, the boy, he wanted to pay in cash. 
signed in. Name, address, phone number, all fake. How do you know that? I said without a credit card, he needed to show some ID. Well, all of a sudden, that was a problem. He and the girl left. I could see them from outside my office window, arguing. Then five minutes later, they came back. He paid with the credit card? No. She did. Deborah Straub. That's her billing address on the card. She didn't look pregnant. Hey, Kellerman. Renee, how you doing? Good. You, uh, you still work in Fugitive Squad? No, I uh, transferred to your old stomping ground, Homicide. You didn't hear? I haven't really been keeping in touch. So what are you doing these days? Working as PI. Oh, yeah? Got my license a couple months ago. How's that? I'm my own boss. It's an honest day's work, mostly tracking down the dishonest. Cheating hearts? And buy you a BLT? Just grab takeout. I'm on shift. Some other time. You tell me when. Not doing anything tonight. Pearls, 8.30. Great. Excuse me. Yes? I'm Detective Falzone. This is Detective Stivers. We're looking for a Deborah Straub. Debbie's our daughter. Something wrong? Do you know where Deborah was last night? She was in bed. We'd gone out for the evening, came home around 10. I checked on her myself. What is this about? We have reason to believe your daughter used her credit card to pay for a motel room last night. That's impossible. There's evidence whoever stayed in that room gave birth. They found a newborn baby buried near the motel this morning. That can't be Debbie. She wasn't at a motel, and she's certainly not pregnant. Where is she now? At school. She left around 7.30. Does your daughter have a boyfriend? No. Is it possible that she was dating someone you didn't know about? She was seeing a boy at her high school, but that's been over for months. What's his name? Craig. Craig Halpern. Is it possible that she saw Craig last night? No. We told Debbie they were getting too serious. She should concentrate on her schoolwork. She agreed. This is obviously some kind of a mistake. Her credit card was stolen, or one of her classmates used it and forged her name. Debbie, honey, why aren't you in school? I don't feel well. Uh, th these are police officers, honey. They have some questions. Your credit card might have been stolen. Can you tell us where you were last night, Debbie? Yeah, I was here. I was at home. Is this your signature? No. No, it's not. Uh, did you loan your credit card to one of your friends? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, what's the matter? God, she's bleeding. I'll call an ambulance. Where's the phone? It's in there. Sweetheart, what is it? Where's the You're saying Deborah Straub recently gave birth? Yeah, as recently as a few hours ago. That girl's lucky that she got to the hospital. She could have hemorrhaged to death from not delivering the placenta. How's she doing now? She's stabilized, but I want to keep her overnight. Can we talk to her? Yeah, she's conscious, lucid. It shouldn't be a problem. You didn't know your daughter was pregnant? We had no idea. You could have come to me. We found your baby, Debbie. You need to tell us what happened. You went to labor last night? Yeah. You decided to go to a motel? Craig did. He said if we went to a hospital, they'd call our parents. Craig is the father? Yeah. My water broke around midnight. And I called Craig. And he came to pick me up, and we went to the motel. Why didn't you ask us for help? I knew you'd be mad at me, Mom. What happened with the baby, Debbie? Well, it hurt so much. I was pushing and pushing, and... And finally it came, and it was dead. Then what happened? Well, we didn't know what to do. And we were both really scared, and I was so tired. So 
so Craig put it in a towel and he took it away. He didn't tell me what he did with it. She's exhausted. You've heard what happened. It was a tragic incident. They used poor judgment, but it's certainly not a crime. Well, we still have a few more questions. Maybe you can come back another time. We will. Where's the newspaper, Munch? No, he's not buying the paper anymore. John Munch without a newspaper? That's like a drug dealer without a pager. Mm -hmm. It used to be I could read the sports section until it became more like the classifieds, you know? Who's traded, who's fired, new versus used. Entertainment's actually business, you know, all contracts and deals, and the front page is entertainment. So what do you say? From now on, all the news I care about is right in here, the FOP bulletin. Everything I need is in here. Tidbits about my fraternal brothers, safety tips, cooking recipes. You're going to have to start buying that paper yourself. Right. Falzon buy his own paper. Falzon and Stavis, what has got on the baby doll case? Well, we tracked down the mother, Deborah Straub, who's all of 16. She went to a motel with her boyfriend, had the baby, which she says was stillborn, and her boyfriend buried it behind the motel. What does the autopsy say? We're still waiting on the report. What about the boyfriend? Craig Halpert is a Dundalk delinquent. Trespassing, loitering, disturbing the peace. Dundalk's this way. Why are the two of you still here? Excuse me. Are you Craig Halpern? Yeah. I'm Detective Falzone. This is Detective Stivers. We need to talk to you about a baby buried behind a motel. I don't know about any baby. We talked to Debbie. Your girlfriend's in the hospital, Craig. She almost died. She's all right. She will be. I told her we should go to the damn hospital. She said we'd be OK that we can handle it ourselves. Sure as hell to know Jack about childbirth. I heard the baby does most of the work. You helped her deliver? As much as I could. But the baby, he was born dead anyway. So you just took the body behind the motel and dumped it like trash? No. It wasn't like that. I buried him. I said a prayer. The ME's calling. Listen, we're going to need to talk to you later, Craig. You going to be around? I should go visit Debbie. Her parents are with her. Do you think they're really going to be all that happy to see you? You gonna be here? We'll need to talk to you later. Yeah. This is the first time I had to issue a birth certificate and a death certificate simultaneously. Manner of death, homicide. The kid said the baby was stillborn. How do you come up with murder? I administered a water test. I filled a tub, placed the lungs in the water. They floated. His lungs were inflated. That child took a breath. Well, could the death have been accidental? There were petechial hemorrhages in his eyes. Death was caused by asphyxiation. I'm ruling this a homicide. Baby Doe was suffocated. That baby was no Doe. He had parents, two of them. Did the boyfriend give you anything? Craig Halpern told the same story Debbie did. He claimed the baby was stillborn. What do you think, G? Let's bring them both in. I always heard homicide was a real tight bunch, but everybody's been great. Treating me like one of the guys, pretty much. Who have you been partnering with? Bayless Lewis. Well. Not Lewis, last couple of weeks, he was in a car accident, hit the windshield. Is he all right? He's fine. Back at work. Guy's got a hard head. Yeah. You ever work with uh, Falcone? Not just him and me, no. You heard anything about his baby case? You um, asked me out for a friendly beer or to pump me about Falzone's case. OK. I was totally out of line. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
No, 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 man. I asked you out to have a beer. You're right. Can we start over? Please? What about you, Kellman? What? You must be a detective. There is something to be said for being your own boss. Not playing duck and cover with department brass. Rules, regulations. My father spent his entire life kissing somebody else's ass. I'm running my own agency, I make up the rules as I go. Any fool can kiss ass, but it takes an Irishman to make a living kissing his own. To cops and mopes, shysters and skells, this city can run, and I'll still get paid. Pogue Mahone, eh? Pogue Mahone. <laughs> Debbie was in a lot of pain, but once the baby came out, she felt better. What if she wasn't better? Would you have taken her to the hospital? Of course. But she was okay. But the baby, it wasn't okay. He, he wasn't okay. He wasn't breathing. No. You're not a doctor. I checked. I put my face up to his mouth. There was no breath. Okay, and then what did you do? Um, he was still attached to the, the cord. I tore it. I thought that had something to do with him not breathing. Then what? I checked again. He was dead. We know the baby wasn't born dead, Craig. That's a medical fact. An indisputable medical fact. You killed your own baby. No, I didn't. You could have gone to the hospital. You could have called the police. You could have asked for help. You would have done it for Debbie, but not your own child? Debbie's here with her parents and her lawyer. She's looking to protect herself. She's probably going to say that you're the one that killed the baby. She wouldn't say that. Debbie's not worried about anyone but herself, Craig. She loves me. She loves her parents more. We wanted to go over a few details of the baby's death with Debbie. As long as we're allowed to stay in the room with her. That's fine. I want you to hear everything she has to say. Now, according to you, Debbie, your baby was born dead. Is that right? How did you know that? Well, it wasn't moving, and it was blue all over and not breathing. Did you try to resuscitate him? Or did you and Craig do something to stop your son from breathing? Just what are you accusing my daughter of, Detective? We have forensic evidence that the infant was born alive, that he took a breath. Someone deliberately murdered that baby. This conversation is over. I'm going to advise my client not to say anything further. And babies make for thick headlines. My office is already deluged with media inquiries. I've already gotten three calls each from Barnfather and Gaffney. We're going to have trouble making a case for first-degree murder. If these two stick to their story that the baby was stillborn, then we have two uninformed kids who will take the stand and say that they thought the baby wasn't breathing. It's tough to prove intent. Well, how did they explain burying the baby behind the motel? They were scared. They panicked. It's still manslaughter. Manslaughter is possible. They took a human life that was minutes old. I'm not going to be satisfied with manslaughter either. We could turn the heat up on the two of them, take what evidence we have to the grand jury, and subpoena both kids to testify. Ah, oh, they're homicide suspects. Any lawyer they get is going to tell them to take the fifth. True, but dragging their teenage butts into the courthouse is going to shake them up. Maybe one of them will testify against the other. At this point, I don't know who's more guilty, the young mother or the young father. Give us some time. We still have a few interviews. Maybe we'll get something. Do it. Balsam. Hey, look who it is. What brings you back? Nostalgia? Business with you. Hmm. See you. <laughs> Come on, give me a minute. About? Your dead baby case. I'd like to get a look at the file. Why? I've been hired by the attorney representing the Straub family. They want me to prove Debbie Straub's innocence. Are you sure Deborah Straub is innocent? She was in the same room as Craig Halperin. Why don't you give me the file? I'll sort out the facts for myself. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to share information on the case file. Fine. I'll ask you. Huh. Kellerman. 
I wouldn't recognize the squad room without you in it. Well, everything is still the same. Package is a little different. What can I do for you? I was hoping that I could check out the uh, Straub Halpern folder. Oh, why is that? I'm doing some PI work now. I've been hired by Debbie Straub's legal team. Well, for a victim's family, I don't, I don't see where there would be a problem, but I don't think I can give you that kind of access for a homicide suspect. <laughs> Danvers really thinks he can get first degree? Well, you know Danvers. I mean, there's barely enough evidence to indict for uh, involuntary manslaughter. <laughs> Forget homicide. Lieutenant, yeah. born father's on one. I gotta take this call. Excuse me, man. You got it. Sorry we couldn't be more accommodating, but this is a murder case. I'll check out the crime scene. No, there is no crime scene. Nothing to check out. It's no longer there. I hate for you to waste your time. Thanks for your concern. <clears throat> hey, Stivers. Stivers, foul zone. In my office. Someone running behind you on this case, who's also worked homicide that knows our ins and outs. Cover your asses, cover your leads, and don't give Kellerman any information. Do I make myself clear? Yes. yes. And don't come back here without proof that one or both of those kids are guilty. Now get out of here. Well, that was strange. I didn't know what to say. He has balls for days to walk in here like nothing happened. He's doing private investigator work now. Kellerman, P.I. Sleazy profession, you ask me. <clears throat> the unit's empty. Now, there are red cases on each and every one of your names. Less talk and more work, detectives. My name's Mike Kellerman. Private investigator, huh? Jeez, I've had a platoon of Balto PD and Sun Paper reporters. This ain't gonna help my rating in the Michelin Guide. Where was the baby found? Woods out back. I'm just gonna walk around, okay? Sure. Just don't bother the guests. People come here for privacy, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> It's about room 35. Everything is about room 35. What are you, some reporter? Uh, I work for the girl who had the baby. I'm trying to find out what really happened. I told the cops everything. A boy came out of room 35 carrying something. He walked out back behind the motel. Been a long day? You getting off soon? Maybe I could buy you a drink. <laughs> I wish. The crap yesterday put me so behind I haven't finished my regular shift. And the manager, he's on me to clean up room 35. Clean up room 35. All he wanted was to rent it ASAP. If you think of anything, give me a call. This girl's young, scared. I'd hate for her to get blamed for something that she didn't do. Wait. I just thought of something. I didn't want to tell the police this, but yesterday, before the boy left the room, I heard a girl's voice. What did she say? I think it was, give it to me. I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to tell the cops. I didn't want them to hold me to it or anything. Yeah, I understand. Thanks. You've been a big help. <laughs> Kicked Craig out of Camden Yards for being drunk and disorderly. He's done a lot of things I'm not proud of. But this is too much, even for Craig. What about his girlfriend? Debbie? When they met, Craig was getting into all kinds of trouble. She calmed him down. She's a good influence. 
Did Craig ever tell you that Debbie was pregnant? No. I wish he had. Debbie must have been afraid to tell her own parents, so he followed her lead. She's a good influence. He follows her lead. If she would have killed the baby, do you think he would have gone along with her? I don't believe Debbie could do what you're accusing her of. What about Craig? I can't see my son doing anything to an innocent child. I can't. That baby was my grandchild. Did anyone in school know that Debbie was pregnant? I saw her last week in the locker room getting changed. It was kind of obvious, but she never said anything. Not to anyone? I'm her best friend. But when she started going with Craig, we didn't really talk anymore. She was one of those girls who dropped everyone the minute she had a boyfriend. Did you ever hear him talk about her pregnancy or hear them discuss any plans for the future? No. They've both been in sort of a haze. I think they thought it would just go away. Like, as long as they were in love, nothing bad could happen. So Craig was in love with Debbie? He was totally in love with her. Totally in love? Yeah. He carried her books, was always saying how beautiful she was. It was sick. You think Craig was obsessed with Debbie? They were obsessed with each other. It was like no one else could come between them. Did he keep you guys from socializing with her? Well, yeah. I think he was jealous. You think he might have been jealous of the baby? Yeah, he probably was. I just never thought he'd go as far as killing it. Did you ever hear him say anything like that? Well, no. But we never heard him say he wanted the baby either. I just don't think this kid Craig is guilty. I mean, he was scared, confused. I don't think he could have murdered his own child. He buried the baby, said a prayer for God's sakes. Well, then who's responsible, the girl? Or just because her parents have enough money to hire a slew of lawyers and Mike Kellerman P.I. doesn't automatically mean she's guilty. She dragged this guy around by the nose. What, so the woman's always in charge of any relationship? Absolutely. Huh. <laughs> How very Italian of you. Well, take us, for example. I acknowledge the fact that you're completely in charge. Oh, really? So what... All I have to do is crook my little finger and you'll come running. Is that it? Just like that? Just like that. Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> well, what do you know? It works. Kellerman, what are you doing here? Waiting on your slow ass? How long do you think they was gonna let you park down here? As long as Gibson's the motor pool sergeant, I'll always be able to get a space. Not all my old friends have forgotten me. Ain't no forgetting you, Mikey. So how you been, huh? How's the uh, P.I. business? I'm doing great. How about you? How's the bar? The bar? <laughs> Damn bar sucks up every last free dollar of mine. Why don't you come up and see me sometime, huh? Buy me a drink. Contribute to the Save Meldrick Fund. Nah, I've been trying to stay out of Fells Point watering halls. You know, after I turned in my badge, I started falling off one too many bar stools around here. When I picked myself up, I realized I got a skill that actually gets you paid in this town. Defense work most? I had a little of everything. Of course, there's more cheating spouses in this town than there is Kodak film. Yeah, well, guess I better let you go. Oh, there's been something I've been wanting to tell you. I'm all ears. I need to thank you. For what? For well, that day in the box. For not giving me your gun. investigation. 
from the crime scene to interviewing character witnesses. Craig was seen carrying the body behind the motel. A maid thought she heard Debbie asking for the baby. Debbie's friends didn't think Craig was good for her, but none of that proves he's responsible for the murder. Well, there's no way Debbie did it. You know that. To the state's attorney, she looks just as guilty as Craig. Now, they might not have enough to go for an indictment of first degree, but they'll definitely go for manslaughter. If you want your daughter to avoid being prosecuted, she's going to have to make a deal. We're going to need Debbie to testify that Craig committed the crime. What if she won't do that? I've worked over 10 years in law enforcement, three of those in homicide. Now, a baby's been killed. Danvers, the prosecutor, he wants a conviction. She's got to talk. She said she won't. Have the lawyers told her that she could be found guilty of manslaughter? Even if the death was an accident, the jury might not believe that. She could be looking at serious prison time. We didn't want to scare her. Well, trust me, scare her. You were a cop. Tell her about going to jail. And can't you scare her a little? Please, try. She's in the backyard. You work for my parents, right? No, I work for you. Yeah, right. Do you know what's going to happen to you and Craig? Everyone keeps making such a big deal about this. I mean, we didn't do anything wrong. Your baby was murdered. When I first found out I was pregnant, Craig and I talked about going to a clinic and getting an abortion or something. Why didn't you? I don't know. I just it seemed too hard. My parents probably would have found out somehow. What did you think was going to happen? I don't know. I gotta tell you what's gonna happen now. Very likely you and Craig are going to prison. That's not fair. Well, the prosecutor doesn't see it that way. He doesn't think it's fair that a dead infant was found buried behind a motel. So if you didn't touch the baby, if it was Craig, you have to come forward and tell the police. Well, Craig didn't do anything. So was it you? Maybe you thought the baby was dead. Maybe you wrapped it in a towel. Maybe you accidentally smothered it. Or is that what Craig did? I and mean, that would make the most sense to me. You just give him birth. I don't know that you could have had the physical strength to do anything more than lie in bed. Craig took the baby. You asked him to give the baby back to you, but he didn't. I love Craig. You love Craig? Well, you're not going to be able to see Craig. Not for maybe 10 years, maybe not for the rest of your life. At the very least, you get out of prison, you could be almost 30 years old. You gotta think about this, Debbie. You're gonna turn 18 behind bars, then 21, then 25. I mean, your whole life as a young woman is gonna be over. I don't care. I love him, and he loves me. Your parents don't let you talk to him now. How do you know what he's thinking, what he's feeling? Maybe he thinks you've already given up on him. No, he knows. I can get a message to him any time I want. Oh, yeah? How do you do that? Look, <clears throat> Craig's probably already working out his own deal with the police. He's going to say you killed the baby. He's going to get off with probation, and you'll be charged with first-degree murder. You get convicted of that, you're going to go to prison until you're an old lady. If you protect him now, you're just hurting yourself. We protect each other. That's what love is. What else have we found out about our young parents? Nothing that would suggest any intent to kill a newborn. All right, it's time to raise the stakes. Let's take what we do have to a grand jury. The cause of death, the birth scene, the physical evidence, the fact that they both lied when initially interviewed. I've got a strong case for manslaughter. I'll get the indictments. Maybe with an actual criminal charge against the two of them, someone will be ready to deal. Try them as adults? Definitely. And I'll ask for a high bail. At least to get some sense of what adult pretrial detention is like, one of them might just crack. And what if they don't? Then a couple defense attorneys are going to have an easy time kicking me around a courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the grand jury, you may begin your questions. Is it possible that someone else, a third party, may have suffocated the baby? From the answers given by the defendants, the baby was with one or both of them from birth to the time the body was buried. The only footprints in the area where the body was discovered were from Craig Halper and the defendant and Reuben Stone, who found the grave and then called the police. Could the dirt from the burial have suffocated the baby? No, there was no dirt in the infant's mouth or throat. 
Is it possible they buried the child without realizing it was still alive? I'm a pathologist. I can't speculate what might have been in their minds. The jury returned with indictments on both defendants. Manslaughter. Your arraignments will follow downstairs. We got the indictments. Now let's hope somebody gets scared and decides to make a deal. They want someone to strike a deal with the state's attorney's office. Well, there's a lot to be said for sitting in jail. That's insane. She's 16 years old. She's being charged as an adult. She could get 10 years. But if she gets a taste of being locked up now, it could just help her see that there's nothing romantic about prison life. I won't let her sit in jail. She's my daughter. You got to do what's best for Debbie. You want to save her life? Don't bail her out. Don't bail her out. Craig Halpern, you are being charged with one count of manslaughter. Do you have an attorney present? Public defender Nellis present for Craig Halpern. Deborah Straub. You are also being charged with one count of manslaughter. Do you have an attorney present? Donald Whalen for the defense of Ms. Straub. I'm going to place bond at $1 million. Can anyone post this for you? No, Your Honor. What about you, Ms. Straub? No, Your Honor. You will be taken into custody now until your trial. Court is adjourned. I know what you're doing, letting the girl sit in jail. I'm trying to railroad her into giving up the boy. Debbie's innocent. Yeah, what have you found to prove that? We're not allowed to share information, remember? I'm doing my job. Yeah, you work for the dollar, I work for justice. Oh, come on, you've been a cop too long to believe that. You've made some wrong choices in homicide. I hope you don't make the same ones as a PI. You don't know anything about me. I know enough. Yeah, I'll see you around. Hey, you bet you will, pal. You can count on it. Son of a bitch. Craig Halpern didn't kill that baby. How do you know that? When Craig talked about the baby, he said he, not it like a thing. He like a son. But Debbie, to her, that baby wasn't even a person. I'm going to prove that she killed